What's up guys, so this is the first episode of Love the Process after a brief hiatus. So I got my man with me. Yeah man, I like that. Yeah. So I um, got my man with me, Jonathan Isaac, Orlando Magic forward, the seven footer himself. <laughs> six ten people. Yeah, I still, I still say six ten. I think I really do think I'm seven now. No, you're dude, you almost hit the fan when you when you walked in. That's not an exaggeration. Um yeah, so I got him sitting down with me and Again, we're just going to talk development and kind of, you know, about his process and how he's gotten to where he's at today. So, um, started off, for those that don't know, I've known Jonathan for shoot, quite some time. What, four, five, five years? Five, six, five, five, is it? Six, I don't Five, six, something like that. Yeah, six, a long time. six, six years, six years. Um, yeah, so when I first met you, you was like a very skinny, I never forgot. You remember that? I <laughs> you never remember forget. that day? Walking it, walk it into the gym. You had a white beard. Uh huh. I'll he never popped me over. He's like, "You trying to get some work in on my bed?" <laughs> I was like, "Uh, sure." Yeah. And I brought my man Solomon was with me. Yeah. So um, I was actually just getting started training. Um, I think I was I was still in college um, at the time. I went to a small school, Ivy Marie University. Jonathan was in high school, mm -hmm. and um, somebody told me he's like, "Yeah, it's like this like six six kid. Like he could be really good. He's really skinny, but he could be good." And I was like, okay, who is he? And they told me about you. And I went to a game, yeah, but I seen him, and I was like, screw it. Well, one of the only times I actually walked up to somebody, uh -huh. it was like, hey, let's get in the gym. And uh, yeah, so, Charlie, tell me about our first session. Because you all, you might see if you remember the one thing that see, I, I, I remember. I remember our first meeting, not the first session so much, but I do remember that it was tough, man. It was it was hard, it was a grind. I was with Solomon, yeah. so it made it easier to have two people. <laughs> but I remember being introduced to uh, Chuggy series. Oh, <laughs> and uh, that's when that's when you miss a free throw and the key throws the ball to the other side of the court, and you gotta run down and grab it and kind of get back to the other side of like two dribbles or something like that. Yeah, but um, I'll do Chuck series and watch them. No, I, think I need to bring it back. You know, be trying to be being weak on these kids. I really am. I see anyone that's that's listening is right. You being weak on y'all, but yeah, uh, no watch to this. But yeah, first first session was was great, and after that we just you know started to develop a relationship, and it just took off from there. Yeah. Hey man, time flies. Time flies. <laughs> For real. Did you, did you, I say, I ask you a question. That when we first started working out, were you like, you know, this kid may have a chance? You don't, you don't see, you don't remember. I literally, the first, after the first workout, I told you this. Oh, yeah. I, I asked you, I was like, you know, you got any offers anywhere? I think, did you have offer like Providence or something? Maybe a road out. It was like some really small school. I was like, the only thing you I had. Remember, I had, I had East Carolina and Arkansas State. Maybe it was those two. It was like a smaller school, and I remember I was like, I asked you which school you want to go to, and you said Texas. Because you like, you wanted KD, KD yeah. you wanted KD, and I was like, um, yeah, you're going to have every school in the country. I was like, if you don't, I was like, I guarantee you're going to blow up, you'll have every school in the country. And I remember, see, it's great memory. You spoke it. I, when, I, when I said it, you looked at me and was like, nah, you ain't, like, you ain't really believe me. I was like, I promise you, you're about to blow up. Like, and you blew up. Right. <laughs> so everything happened, yeah. That's crazy. Man, time flies. So, um, for, for the people that don't know, um, just real quick, two minutes and under, tell them a little bit about, you know, kind of your, you know, where you're from, all that type of stuff. Um, I know you're from New York and then with the yep, Naples yep. and all that stuff. So. Born in Bronx, New York. I moved to Naples, Florida when I was 10. And a couple years after that, met a key. Um, but the, the journey has been pretty, pretty, pretty simple. You know, I was, uh, I wasn't hugely, hugely recruited. Out of high school, I got the opportunity to go to IMG for a year, um, and then that blew up for me. I went to Florida State. I worked out pre-draft with a key, got drafted to the Orlando Magic, and then go, I ended up going into my third year. Okay, third year. So, um, what's the big thing? I guess you know we're gonna talk a you know a mm -hmm. lot about development, but you know, since you do play in the league, I'm sure a lot of Magic fans are gonna probably listen to this. What's the big thing? You know that you think you learn from your first year leave when you know we're going through a lot more injuries and stuff like that to this to this next year i would say one of the big things is routine and um your first year in the league there's so much going on and you don't really have those those set ingrained routines that you see other guys having yeah. so you'll be in the weight room let's say and you look at vooch and vooch is doing the same thing every single day before every single practice. He has his routine down, he has his post-practice routine down. So like, what what do you mean, sorry to cut you off, but like, what do you mean by like routine? Like you're talking about like, routine, like stretches? Like stretches, like, oh, okay. um, you know, what shots he's getting up, where he's taking them from, mm -hmm. um, how he goes about his recovery after games, you yeah. know, how long he's in the cold tub, 
when Tommy goes to sleep, all, all types of things like that. And when you're a rookie, a lot of the time you're just going off of the fly and you're learning what kind of works for me. Mm -hmm. But having guys in the locker room that, that are like that, that mm -hmm. have their routines, who know, you know what they are and what they're doing, um, help to kind of speed up for me and be able to look around and be like, okay, okay, I need to develop a routine for myself. And now going into my third year, I can already see like how much easier it is for me to, you know, get acclimated to things and, um, you know, have my routine when I get to the gym. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm eating. I know what time I'm trying to get to bed every night. I know, you know, things. Oh, like you that. go to bed. Same. <laughs> try to yeah. try. Yeah. I know sleep is like a huge, huge, huge thing, huge, and people huge, don't take into account, like especially like you know, working with kids. Maybe like oh, I'm trying to get four hours of sleep and I'm on the phone all night yeah. and then go in the uh, next day. And, can't focus and smoking left hand layups and all that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's huge and um, you know, it's something that the people in the league really stress. Like our, yeah. our trainers, our massage therapists, they stress to us, get your sleep. Um, because when you're doing work in the weight room, when you're doing stuff in the gym, your sleep is where, you know, you get that that growth, you get that recovery, the reset for the next day to be able to do it again. So yeah, sleep is hugely important and it's been something that I've been like, put the phone down, I gotta get to bed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that phone that phone makes it like mm -hmm. really tough. So, you know, you said you, know, you were looking at Mooch, I'm sure, you know, some other guys, like, do you think, like, the presence of having, like, veterans and stuff, like, has, like, helped you significantly? Because I know, I mean, you guys are primarily, it seems like a, a veteran team, like, I yeah. a few young guys, but. I would, I would say that's, that's the, that may be the biggest thing um, for a, a young guy's development is having a, a vet um, who is willing to engage, yeah. willing to, um, you know, go out of their way to help them out, to speak life, you know, to, mm -hmm. to them, to their development, to what they're doing. I think that might be the, the biggest difference, um, you know, from a guy being, um, I don't, I don't want to say mediocre, but uh, maybe just having, having a, uh, an average rookie season or mm -hmm. an average, you know, kind of trajectory of their career yeah. to, to, to having a great one, having, you know, older guys on the team, even in the league to say, you know, you're going to be great and you're going to be fine. You know, take me, take you under my wing. I'm gonna teach you how. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about money. I'm gonna teach you yeah, a little bit about you know your per diem, what you do with it, um, how you go about talking to the coaches, how you go about talking to your teammates. You know how early it'll be for practice, all, all types of stuff like that. And mm -hmm. the thing is, you don't you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And you know, sure. a lot of rookies like like me, you, you bump your head because you're just like I, I didn't know I didn't know I was supposed to be you know here at that time. I didn't know yeah. I wasn't supposed to say that then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just having guys who who know the process, who know the ins and the outs of the league is, is, a, is a great help. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, so you said, you know, you, you didn't, you know, we kind of talked about it again, you didn't really blow up, mm -hmm. I guess, per se, until, was it? What year? Dang. It was, memory. shoot, like what, 20, uh, 2016, 2015, 2016? Yeah. yeah 2017, I got drafted, so yeah. one year in college. So that's like a very, very short yeah. amount of time from like, you know, some people know about who you are, but you know, as far as like a national recognition, mm -hmm. you know, being you know someone unknown to a, two years later, a year and a half later, yeah. you in the draft and you number six pick overall, so it's not even like you know, so, man, it, it was it was a whirlwind of just like information. Yeah. So um, you know, it was a, a big thing was about the EYBL. Mm -hmm. So having um, you know, the top coaches in the league being able to see you play. Um, after going, coming from like U S A, going from U S A to That's U R B L crazy. is a big jump. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, once that happened, it was just like phone call after phone call after meeting with this coach, meeting with that coach, and I'm just like, what is going on? I can't, I can't. And then uh, I remember one night getting a call from somebody, Kentucky, California's gonna call you tonight. Louisville's gonna call you tonight. And I got, <laughs> I had a call from Pittsburgh, Louisville, and Kentucky, all in the same night in the span of like 30 minutes. That's and they're crazy. all telling me, you know, you know, you come to the school, you're gonna go to the league, all this stuff. And I'm just like, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago, I was out. I had no clue that this was gonna take place. Did you think when you started high school that you was gonna, you know, no. get to? The, no, <laughs> that's 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 a quick answer. No, I oh, ever since I was a kid, mm -hmm. I always shied away from telling people that I wanted to be in the NBA, just because of like my own self. Um, Kind of belief, belief wasn't there. Yeah. So it was always like, kind of tiptoeing around, you know, what what I what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And when even when milestones start to happen, like okay, you know, I'm moving up in the rankings as a high school player. Yeah. I still would be like, you know, it's probably not gonna work out. It's probably not gonna happen. So you were like almost like harder on yourself. Like you, yeah. 
like you're not even a critic, but just like you'd almost beat yourself up and be down yeah, yourself. A- absolutely, that was that was a huge part. Um, and something you know, something that's a continual battle, of just learning, learning yourself, learning the way you think. Um, you know, for me, it's learning who I am and God that, that gives me, um, you know, the confidence to be to be who I am. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so that 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 was that was definitely a, a struggle for me growing up. But at the same time, it made me work. Yeah, it made it made me work. Was like, man, I, I it's not gonna happen for me. Um, I'm not gonna be great. I'm not gonna be. It made me like, okay, I gotta get the gym. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So like, when you were coming up, you know, for me, and I'm sure for 90 percent of the people listening out there, you know, they didn't necessarily have, um, you know, access to someone that's at your level or NBA player, somebody that made it professional or shoot, I didn't know anybody that played. You know, high, shoot, I know you know I played Division One basketball yeah. at all. So like, when you were kind of starting, you know, let's just go from ninth grade year, whatever the case may be. Ninth grade year, kind of explain to me and to the people like kind of how your developmental process, like mentally, as far as like I got to do this to prepare, I got to do this to prepare, like kind of progress. You know, let's say from ninth grade to when you started to blow up, did the work level increase because you're like, oh, like now it's getting serious. To college, to now in the league, like you know, did it continually increase or were you always, you know, from that young age, like, just put in the work? Yeah, I, I, I would say it was definitely on an upward, you know, incline. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, it's just it's just the people around you, like, just coming into different people, coming into to meeting you. Mm-hmm. And you, uh, he was a, a big part about, you know, me developing a work ethic because a lot of times he'd be like, you know, let's get in the gym. We got to get in the gym. And when we did work out, they were tough. We were doing... What's that? What's that stuff? The, the jumping program, all type of stuff like that. <laughs> jump attack. A jump attack. But it's just, yeah. it just, it, it, it show, it shined a light, and, and really the proof was in the pudding in terms of me getting better. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay, you know, I'm working really hard and I'm getting better really fast. Yeah. And that that it's like a, it's like a drug. Like I want to get better. I want to get better. Okay, okay, I gotta keep working. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, as I continue to progress, you just you just you just meet new people and, and learn new things, and um. When I, I did I did my pre draft with the key and that was <laughs> oh my gosh that, that I mean that 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 was huge for my development but um it was tough and we, we worked out what twice a day twice a um, day man. most of the time was twice a day and uh, it was it, it was it was good and just uh, you know getting into the league now and um, having a rough rookie season mm-hmm. um, you know starting to come come more into my own the second season and. and, and looking to push that forward in the third, it's all because of the work. It's all because of, you know, analyzing myself and kind of being honest with myself in terms of where do I need work, what do I need to do, and how can I best attack that thing yeah. um, to get it to where I want it. So what's like some of the things that, you know, after the season's over now, I'm sure you probably have or will soon, I'm sure you probably have already mm-hmm. looked at, you know, all right, I need to work on these things for next season. So like what's some of the big things that you're working on? And then for like, again, those listeners, you know, maybe don't have a trainer, or, you know, other trainers, other case may be like, how do you decide, like, yeah. all right, I want to work on those things. Um, so you make sure, like, you know, you're attacking your offseason smart, not just doing random stuff. Yeah, exactly. So the, the biggest thing for me from the end of the season was my, the first thing that was my body. Yeah. I have to get my body to another level um, with the weight room, with eating, with all types of stuff like that. So that, that, that was the first thing on my mind. Okay, I need to set up a, a weight program to get me to where I need to be, you know, hopefully at the start of next season, I'm around 235 and being able to maintain it throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've done, I've done a good job with that. And then the skill part is just, you know, a con- continuing to, to become a more and more consistent shooter from three. Yeah. Um, and then being able to, 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 to make plays off of the dribble, um, to get, get in the shots, get into the rim, coming off pick and rolls, um, just being a more ball dominant player. Gotcha. And, uh, um, and, and just and just shot making and shot making really you know pushes everything um, to the next level when you can make shots you can you can get to the rim you can um, create um, you know off the dribble and all types of stuff like that so for kids that for guys that don't have access to an a key access to um, you know maybe a weight room or something like that I would I would just say to just uh, when you're when you're looking at yourself and I mean you know yourself you know I struggle with I struggle with my ball handling all you need is a ball. Um, yeah, and yourself. Can you repeat that one more time? <laughs> dude, you have no idea. I got. I'm a ranter. Like, if y'all don't know that now, yes, you, will. you you should learn that about a key. I, I like to rant. I swear. I, you know, the amount of times I say ball handling, 
it's like the easiest thing to improve and the hardest thing. Mm. Because it's the easiest thing because you don't need proper form, you know, like a jump shot or something mm-hmm. like that. All you gotta do is put in work on it. But it's the hardest thing because it's frustrating as heck. Yeah. So when you continually mess up on a drill Tease. over and over and over again, it's very easy to just be like, you know, I'm done with this. I don't want to do it. I'm gonna quit. So just repeat that one more time. For anyone that's in process, fam, please listen to this because I am so tired of ranting after every session about the same thing. All you need, <laughs> all you need is a ball and an idea of you know what you want to become. You know, if you look at anybody who is a um, a great ball handler, a great player, anybody who is great at anything, um, it's been the daily, daily grind of messing up, trying mm-hmm. again and trying again to get it right. And um, the more and more you do that, the more times you get it right, and it shows in the, in the players that do it the best. Nah, for sure. I think a lot of times, like with players too, and I don't know if this related to you ever when you were younger, I know it did with me, like, a lot of times players are scared to mess up. Mm-hmm. So like, you make mistakes, and if you have like insecurities about yourself, mm-hmm. or especially like if you're doing a workout, let's say with other people, you don't want to be the one that's always messing up, because then, you know, you feel almost like inferiority, like they're looking at you like, oh, he's not uh-huh. that good. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna play safe and stay in my comfort zone, rather than, you know, get un- getting uncomfortable and, you know, pushing myself. And I think that's like, I mean, I'm sure you could attest that, like, you got to get uncomfortable. To yeah, get it's, it's, um, it's, it's human nature. It's human nature to, to always want to look your best and always want to, um, you know, shy away from looking weak or looking uncomfortable. But there's a quote that just like, it, whenever, you know, um, um, let's say I'm shooting in the gym, whenever I'm working out, whenever I'm in the weight room, and I'm struggling or something like that, there's the, there's the quote that says, um, uh, now I'm gonna forget the quote. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not the critic who counts. Yeah. It's not the, um, the person who looks on uh, who counts. It, it's the, per, the, per, the only person that counts is the person who's doing the work, who's, um, actually I wanna, I wanna pull it up because it's just so dope. But it's something that I think about uh, it's the it's the, Le, the LeBron kind of pushes it the the man in the arena. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think yeah, I think I heard that. Let me find it. Got it. So it says, it says it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at its worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who either know, who neither know victory nor defeat. So that, that that's, that's a quote that kind of runs through my head all the time. Um, when I'm either struggling, when I'm you know, when I'm trying to get work on something that I keep messing up on, it's not anybody else who's not in the drill with me, you yeah. know, trying to get better with me who who matters. And the thing is, the same people who you think may um, you know, may who may look down on you as as your weakness when you develop, mm-hmm. and the same people who are going to be praising you for the strength that you have. So oh, that's um, very true. You know, I, I would just say to just continue to. It's it's, it's not even it's not even so much as believing in yourself. It's just believing in what works. Practice works, practice makes perfect. I made my brother, my little brother, um, <laughs> we, were, uh, we were going over Psalms 23 yesterday mm-hmm. and I had him go through each verse and write down what each verse meant to him. Mm-hmm. And the first page looked like a disaster. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, we made our corrections, we did it again. Mm-hmm. The second page looked a little less like a disaster. And, and he, at, at points in time, he, he didn't want to give me an answer because he thought that the answer was going to be wrong. Yeah. Um, or he didn't want to make corrections because you know it made, it made him look weak in a sense. But mm-hmm. the more we did it four times over, and when you compare the first page to the fourth page, it's a, it's a night and day difference just yeah. because of it. The truth is, practice makes better. Mm-hmm. Nah, most definitely. I think that's something that you know anyone listening like. It applies to more than just basketball. You every you every single area of your life. Like, every single area of your life. Like my, my biggest thing is how you do anything until you do everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you have like kind of that learner's mentality or whatever the case may be, and you're and not even I don't even want to say like you're not afraid to make mistakes. I think everybody's to some degree has some fear of you know making Absolutely. some mistakes. Absolutely. And I think if you say you don't, you are either a very unique individual or you're probably lying, putting on the front. Um, but you know, but you're more you're more insecure than the one who's willing to. 
oh wow, I'm Jim. This is a tweet of us bar. <laughs> right? <laughs> nah, it's real, honestly. Um, like, it's funny because I was actually uh, talking about something with Adrian. Um, we were talking about, like, you know, one of my things, like, worrying about what other people think of me. And um, he was talking about it, and he's like, I don't want you to have that mentality of, like, the F what everybody thinks about me because mm-hmm. not only the people that say that, or the people that really care, like you say that to try high that you yeah. care about it more than anything else. So, no, that's 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 very very true. So, tell me a little bit about like kind of day in the life, off season. You know, got anything going on for? I don't know what you guys probably got mini camp or something. In yeah, so December so, or something. Yeah, mini camp's not yet. Right now, it's just individual workouts. But um, wake up when we. I want I want all the details. Okay, so I I have a chef because oh shoot, <laughs> I have a chef man. Because because the food thing is so important to, to me and just my development. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh, I'm waking up around um, you know 7:30. Um, my breakfast is most of the time already prepared. So I get up. Um, my chef will be at the place and they'll be cooking. I'll eat. I'll head to the gym. So what food you be getting? I'm, I'm very curious. So uh, All right, I, I, have, I pretty much have the same thing every every morning. It's just like Basically, a big no, <laughs> a big omelet, and I rotate pancakes, French toast, waffle. And then some type of maybe like a grits or potatoes or something like that. Yeah. Um, I have that every morning. I have my vitamins in the morning. Um, and then I head to the gym. I go through my uh, my stretching, all that type of stuff. And then I get on the court for about an hour. And then when I'm done with that, I get in the weight room for an hour. And then I eat a lunch at the gym. Um, you know, I go back home. You know, about two hours later, I have another lunch. Um, at my at, at the house with the with the chef, mm-hmm. and then um and then and then after that is pretty much pretty much just chilling, you know, figure out things to do, you know, on Tuesday and Friday I got Bible study, so that's where I'm at later in the day. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's just 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 finding stuff to do, and then I so pretty much overall, and then I, and then I have two more dinners at nighttime, um, sp- spaced out by like a couple hours, so I'm getting like what five five six meals a day. With a snack and two two like thousand calorie shakes, so I'm, so it's around like five six thousand calories a day. It's made a huge difference. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's like uh, it's very intense. Mm-hmm. So that much, that's very. But the, the biggest thing was like I didn't know I could eat this much. Yeah. So when you're just eating three meals a day and you're like, man, I'm full. When you introduce those other meals, I'm like, and now now, now I'm like excited about it because I'm like I did not know like I yeah. could eat this much food. And now that I'm putting it away, it's like, and I see the results. It's been yeah, so you said you was what, 209 to end of the season? 209 to end the season, and I'm about 230 right now. It's 230 yesterday. Yeah, that's, that's a significant difference, 20 mm-hmm. something pounds. And it's only been like, what, two months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to be big. I think that'll be huge for you. Like, yeah. Just change. Like, yeah, I think that honestly, like you said, that if that was your number one focus, like that'll change your game more. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're going to get better skill wise. If you didn't get any better skill wise, exactly. you added 20 something pounds, exactly. you're still a completely different player. Exactly. So oh, that's big. Um, one of the big things, you know, I actually uh, use you as a prime example. Sometimes I show film to, you know, some of the guys that are a little bit more dedicated mm-hmm. um, that I train and everything. Is your motor like how? Mm-hmm. Like why do you play like? Because I'm sure you, you know, there's other guys in the league, or whatever. You know, that it seems almost as if they're like content. You know, what I'm saying uh-huh. just being in the league, they got the money, they got all that comes with it, and they go out there, and it kind of looks like they do enough to get by yeah. after the motions. Like, why do you, you know what I'm saying, play with such a motor? Because I feel like, honestly, God, like, that's a skill nowadays that it very really, few people really, have. It like, really is. When you, look at, when you look at a guy like Siakam, you know, most improved player, the biggest thing about him is how hard he plays. Yeah. He plays harder than, you know, a lot of guys that are on the court, five, ten points of his of his game are, like, transition, just mm-hmm. running harder than everybody else. But um, for me, I really couldn't give you, you know, a... Uh, uh, Maybe like a singular thing, like you know, this is why I do it because you know I just want to be great. You know, like that. But <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I just, I, I'd say I just want to win, um, and um, that's been something for me that's that's helped me win and helped me, you know, get on teams and start. And um, it's just like you know how hard you play, and it's kind. Of, it, I, I want to say it kind of comes natural to me. I don't say did you always have that? Yeah. Like, so like ever, like, ever, like even in high school, not being as you know, talented as everybody else. I, I was always somebody that, that ran hard, that played hard, that really liked defense, you know, getting stops. Yes, um, yes, that's another rare thing. Yeah, so that, that that's that's what it's been for me. Um, 
in the league now and just and just seeing that it works yeah. you know guys who who are just like who take you know who take matchups really seriously who take you know just playing hard just make just making things happen those guys are really appreciated by their teams and a lot of times they make they make the money that they, they make I money know. that they wouldn't make um that they wouldn't make otherwise you know guys who can't really score but they're on a team because they mm. bring energy they bring you know momentum changing plays nah for real i wonder like a again like just no disrespect. I look like a Corey Brewer or like a PJ yeah. Tucker, like dudes like PJ, that. And PJ like, Tucker. He's like, oh, he how tall is he? Like really? Because he looks like he's like, like six, six eight. He's six eight, something like that. I don't, I, I don't know. Like I'm like looking at him, like yo, know, he gets so many offensive rebounds. Like all, all, and, and all he defense, does, like he, he, he plays sh- his role. He, he shoots just starting corner, corner, three, corner threes. Corner threes. <laughs> he has one trademark. He shoots corner threes, and you don't take him off the floor because he's gonna, you know, guard the best player. He's gonna yeah. give it what, he, what he's got. So is that there's something guys like that? I think there's a, there's a guy like that on every team. Yeah. Who's, who's who who doesn't have a clear cut offensive role for the team to go score points, but it makes a huge difference when he's on the floor. I, I tell I tell like players that's coming up all the time. I'm like, man, if you can just yeah, we're gonna work on all the moves or do Kyrie steps all type of yeah. stuff. But if you can just hit a corner three and play with a crazy motor and guard, you can get paid mm-hmm. a lot of money. What's up, guys? A brief intermission to tell you: please like, share, and subscribe so we can help spread this message with as many people as possible. we got some great interviews coming up with players, coaches, trainers, analysts, and we want to be able to share that with as many people as possible. So again, if you're digging the content, don't hesitate to share it with as many people as you know so we can help improve the game of basketball. Appreciate you guys. You know, I'm a better individual defender when I understand our team defense, when I understand where guys are supposed to be, when I understand, you know, the, the reads that our coach wants to make, likes mm-hmm. to make, um, things like that. I got you. What um, as far as like defense, like who's like some dudes that like you look at like yo, like I like, I want to kind of model because it's crazy like you've been saying this. Like I want to model my game defensively after them. Or like I like the way they play defense. Or you know, I feel like I can kind of influence the game on the on the other side of the ball like that. Um, because again, like I, I want to really talk about this because I just think it's so like yeah. it's so undervalued in like youth basketball culture now. Like yeah, I mean uh, Kawhi Kawhi's a great defender. Yeah. Um. You know, when you talk about perimeter defense, um, guys on our team, AG, um, is, 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 is a good defender. Wes is a great defender. I think Wes had, um, I think, the top, one of the top top five percentage um, for, you know, stops in the league. Oh, I can't wait to ask the next question. You just gave me some, some good ammo. Yeah, yeah and, you know, as a, as, as a rotation player. But, um, yeah, th- 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 there's a bunch of guys in the league. I think the, the the biggest thing that I look for is just guys who want to play defense. Yeah. You know, the, there's you know, there's a lot to be said about um, you know NBA basketball. They talk about you know offense offense wins games, defense mm-hmm. wins championships, and it's true. You know, teams that that can come together and understand the scheme and put it to put it in, into motion and get it done. They they are they are tough to beat. Yeah. Um, even when they don't have the same uh, offensive firepower. No, for sure. So one thing you said that kind of segue to a question because I've been having this debate with a lot of people like, how do you feel about the mid range? Ooh, be real. Like I don't, I don't want like the, I don't want like uh, the, oh like oh, coach don't hear this. And yeah, no, I, I think I think uh, I think analytics play a part in our league. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, basketball is basketball, and mm-hmm. if you can, if you can, if you can knock it down, if you can, if you can hit shots. Um, at a level that makes sense, yeah. you know, that helps your team win, then, I, then, I'm, then I'm not against it. If you look at Kawhi in the playoffs, the amount of, uh, you know, pull up, jump shots off the dribble, jump shots that he took and made, mm-hmm. um, you know, speaks for itself. Yeah, I feel like, depending on what type of player you are, but if, if you're going to be a dude, like you said, you want to make things, you want to work on a shot create mm-hmm. and stuff like that, I feel like you have to have a mid You have to have a mid have Like, if you're a PJ Tucker who's sitting in the corner majority of the time on mm-hmm. offense, yeah, you might not have to have it because that's not going to be your role. And at play, this you know, stage in his play. career, mm-hmm. he's not going to, you know, completely, even though Brooke Lopez became mm-hmm. freaking best shooter in the world out of nowhere. Right. But, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's, that's not his role, but I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like there's, like, so much back and forth and, like, it's almost viewed so negatively, like, mid-range when it's like, yo, if you're open, it's, a, it's literally a free throw. Yeah, if yeah, I mean. 80% from the line. It's, it's just because of the the – I want to say just, an, just analyzing the league and the mm-hmm. way we score points. The majority of it is layups and three pointers. Yeah, um, you know those are the most, uh, uh, I think, percentage wise, um, the best shots to take. You know, yeah. after a free throw, free throws the, the highest percentage of makes in the league. And our coach talks about it. 
um, and then his layups and then his three pointers. So the the mid range does get phased out a bit because it is a tough shot. Because a lot mm -hmm. of times you shoot mid range and moving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is going to be like a more, I guess, like a light harder, harder question. Who is your favorite player coming into the league? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you your favorite players now. <laughs> We're not gonna do that, but who was your favorite player coming into the league? Kind of like, what was that experience like when you went up against him the first time? Was it like an all like, yeah, like I mean, all moment? Or? My, my favorite player has always been KB, um, and getting the chance to guard him was, was was crazy. It's just it's just a, I, I, I don't want to sell out right now. How much did he have on you? He had like I think it was like forty. <laughs> <laughs> but but in my it wasn't all on me. It no, was, it wasn't. I, I watched but, the game. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't. But no, he uh, he he. he KD, the end of the day, you can't, you can't do anything. If you, if you, because I actually watched that film like extensively that game because I know yeah, I KD was your guy. He did his thing, but no, it, um, you know, getting the chance to guard him was, was great. Um, you know, several times during the game, I'm just like, oh, like I'm guarding KD, like yeah. I'm touching him right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that sounds crazy, but you know, that's 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 what it is when you, when, when you're a kid and you 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 admire this player and you know, what he brings to the game. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're, you're standing next to him guarding him and he's guarding you. Yeah. Um, so I got to score on him too, so. Hey, yeah. that's a big, as long as you go back out, that's a big thing. But, nah, KD, KD won't score. I think he had 50 some when they played the Raptors on Kawhi in the regular season. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not yeah. his it's He scored a million on me. Literally, <laughs> a million. Nah, I'm not gonna But, um, so, you, know, you, you talked about you know kind of KD and everything like that. Um, you know being a favorite player and type of stuff. Do you watch film of other dudes in the off season? So now it's off season. Do you watch dudes like, hey, I like kind of like that from his game. I can implement that, or is it like I don't really care about any of them other guys. I'm only focused on me and you know what I can do to get better. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. I think I think any player that doesn't do that, you know, is 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 in, it's harming themselves. Yeah. So there's you know there's guys in the league who do things better than you do, mm -hmm. and are just are just different players. Everybody's unique, and, and, and guys, like I said, guys guys have things um, that if you want to become a complete player, mm -hmm. um, you can implement into your own game. So watching film on KD, watching film on Paul George, Siakam even with his jump hooks, um, I feel like that he's like patented yeah. <laughs> so far in, in, in his game, just just being able to get over his left shoulder and. and, and um, you know, hit them little hook shots. It's been something that I've watched mm -hmm. for myself. So, um, yeah, th th there's guys all over the league that, that do things differently, not even in your same position, just the, you know, how a guy creates space. Yeah. You know, James Harden, how he, you know, gets guys um, off balance on some stuff. His angles are crazy, dude. Like, I mean, you, you'll be able to tell me better than I know, but like from film, we only got one, you know, angle that we're looking at. Yeah. But it literally looks like when James Harden's attacking, like, he literally drives directly at your head. Mm -hmm. Like, and you that are going, Get a blocking foul, or you're gonna open up. Yeah, I, I think I only guarded him like twice. I I got two stops, but yeah. <laughs> that's close cool. to me. You only fouled off? Uh, uh, that's good. I only got to go twice though. Yeah. So a small sample size. Yeah. So just a few more questions. Um, one, what is kind of the difference of high school to college, college to the league? Um, because you know we got a bunch of people, a bunch of trainers, a bunch of coaches, a bunch of players is probably going to listen to this, and you know, everybody's got goals, majority of people got goals to get into the league one day, mm -hmm. um, but what's just like kind of the difference, not just of, obviously we know everyone's better, yeah. but you know, everyone's bigger, like it's the speed of the game, got differences, all this stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's huge game differences, you know, speed, um, physicality, all types of stuff like that, but you, you, you grow into that as you as you get there. Yeah. I would say the, the bigger things are the personal stuff, the, the time management that changes when you when you don't have a you know a parent or a college coach pretty much dictating what you're supposed to do. Um, so when you came into the league, sorry to cut you off, like, do they have like somebody that kind of like, I don't want to say watches over you, you know what I'm saying, but you come to the league, what, you're 19 years old, Yeah. you get paid millions of dollars, like how does that? Yeah, they, they, they try to. And to the to the best of their ability, to the best, and I think it's, I think it's a good thing that they do. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's it's, it's just not. Um, yeah. I don't want to say it's not enough, but it's not it's not what it, what college is. Yeah. You know, to where you know they know where you're staying, they know you know when you're getting in. They can yeah. they, they got people coming around to check curfew, all types mm -hmm. of stuff like that. So, um, you know, when, when you're an adult and you're you got to start thinking about credit and all type <laughs> of stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's just it's just different facets, and time management is a huge thing. Um, and I say another thing is just about you know the the, the person that you are, mm -hmm. and I think um, 
with basketball, we, we, we do to a certain extent focus too much on on on, on, on just the player mm -hmm. um, and how important being a likable person yeah. when you get to these teams and get on a college campus and when you're leaving, having people be able to say he's a good guy, he's a mm -hmm. good dude, um, kind guy, you know, knows how to you know carry himself. You know, when, when college, when NBA scouts you know get onto your campus or college coaches go to your high school, high school and can talk to teachers and can talk to people and they say he is a stand up guy, stand up girl. Hey, um, shout out to. Inside joke, shout out to Charlie, stand up guy. It's like his <laughs> number one. Yeah, so, I mean, so yeah, that's 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 a that's a big part of it. Um, yeah, gotcha. No, no, that makes sense. Like I, yeah, everything speculation, and, you know, media you know, says a lot of things, but there's some dudes that I think probably would have got drafted a lot higher this this draft, but there were apparently some big character issues. Yeah. So that, I mean, that no, that makes a big difference because again, it's more than just basketball. So we got that, you know, kind of the big difference in school. The other thing, that kind of segue what you were saying, like, how do you, how did you handle, like, and, and not even just from, you know, getting to the league, because we know that's a huge jump, um, but, like, even just, like, from, you know, being an average or, you know, above average, but not a, you know, crazy known high school dude, you know, from the beginning of your high school career to, like, now you top ten in the nation, now you on mock drafts. Like, is it tough? Because I know, a lot of people probably change around you and stuff like that. I know a lot of people go through that, and it's like, you know, from you know being around, you know, some guys that have made that jump. It seems like it's a big adjustment. It yeah. can be a lot of pressure. And I think a lot of times, like, dudes try and write it off like it's not, but it's really a mess because, again, just being around yeah, all yeah, guys, yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah, you're right. It seems like it's like to me, it looks like it kind of like almost eats away at dudes, you know. And they just again they put on a mask. They try and act like you know everything's cool. You know you got a bunch of Instagram likes that type of stuff. But it seems like deep down it could be it could be a lot. Like from being top high school guy, a bunch of expectations. Being a top college guy, a bunch of expectations. Then going to the league, you fulfill the expectations. And, and but it's a lot yeah. of pressure, you know, from family, from you know friends, maybe that you haven't talked to in a while. Yeah. I don't know. You dealt with that, but yeah, no. I, I think every 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 player. Um, or every NBA player, every you know college player deals with it from from high school to college, from college to the NBA. Um, it's just the way you know our society works. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing is having people around you that you love mm -hmm. and that love you and that you trust and that trust you and finding your significance, finding your purpose, finding um, all that in them. And, and, and you know, for for me, it's it's, it's, it's a God thing. That's and, wrong, and, and finding my finding who I who I am, who I believe myself to be. You know, based on what the what the word of God tells me, I am. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, when it comes to the outside of people telling me this and telling me that, mm -hmm. you know, I can always go back to that. You know, and find peace and, and find reassurance in, in who I am and who I was created to be. And, and how did that journey kind of? You know, when did that journey get started? Um, you know, with you coming to Christ, because we, you know, anyone that follows me knows that's a you know, yeah the the main part of your life. It was a um, it was a journey, man. And yeah. you're and, and and you're a part of it. Amber's a part of it. Um, I remember, I mean, I, I grew up in church when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, and uh, having people around you, you know, everybody, you know, for, for somebody who grew up, you know, in church when they were younger, mm -hmm. you know, there comes a point in time where you have to make a decision for yourself. Yeah. And um, it's easy to ride out on that, you know, your parents' faith mm -hmm. um, and all that, but once you get into the, <laughs> into the world, like school and college and all types of stuff like that, um, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to hold on to when it's not something that you, for yourself, believe mm -hmm. and affirm. And um, you know, getting to college and high school, I, I, I remember times where um, you would want to do a Bible study, <laughs> and Keith's like, "Man, let's you know, let's just sit down and do a Bible study." I'm like, "Man, come on, man, you're uh, my trainer, man." I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, it, was, it was a pre draft, and we was at like one of the FSU cafeterias. I'll never forget, man. It was me, you, and Amber. We were sitting down eating, and I was like, "Hey, like, you want to do a Bible study?" And you like. And I, I don't really read the Bible like that. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man, if you ever want to do it, let me know. And I'm like, all right. And that was it. Like, you, you was like, once I said that, you was like, oh, my God. Yeah, bro. Like, it's over. <laughs> it's over, man. So, uh, so yeah, but, um, you know, those things those things are seeds. Mm -hmm. And those things now, you know, I can look back on it, you know, and thank God for it, that I had people who planted seeds and, um, you know, showed me the love of Christ and wanted to, you know, see me grow. And even just, just speak life. Yeah. Um, you know, having people, you know, to tell you that, that you're going to be great, um, you know, and that God has great things in store for you a lot of the time. It really, really helps people and then you don't really know it, but you're planting a seed and God later brings the increase. Yeah. But for me, um, yeah, I was, I was saying grew up in church, um, 
you know, really when I got into the league, you know, I had that, that, that point in time where it, it would, I had to make a decision for myself. Like, I want, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. I want, um, you know, to honor him and what I do and, and who I am mm -hmm. and believe that, you know, God raised him from the dead and that, and that my sins are forgiven and, you know, I've been, you know, reconciled to the Father and all that. Um, yeah, and I've been I've been on a journey I've been on a journey <laughs> with with that ever since it continued to grow my faith and understanding of who God is and who I am you know every day. How was that like? How was that in the league? Because and what I mean by how was that in the league? Does it I'm sure it does? But does it get hard? Because you know you're in a position that so few people mm. you know are in where you know it's like obviously gospel denying yourself mm. and you're in a position where. You don't have to. You never have to, but you know you definitely don't have to deny yourself. You know, with you know fame, you got fortune, and all that type of stuff. So, does it does it get hard? And does it get hard? You know, I don't know. You know, the background of your team or anything like that. You know, your coaching staff, things like that. But does it get lonely sometimes as well? And how do you keep going? You said good people. Um, you know, but are there? I know you, you got a great, you know, church family yeah, and everything, yeah. you know, so there's like really big influences, you know, with your position because you know, you're not the, I hate to say it, but you're not the average person, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, that just, you know, I go to church, I go back and, and I go to work my nine to five, you have so much more access to, yeah. to different things that. I would say um, it, it's tough, but, um, you know, understanding that, you know, everybody's their own person. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to live my life just like somebody else has to live their life. Yeah. You may get to choose how they want to live their life. I get to choose how I want to live mine. Um, you know, I choose my. I choose to live. You know, live by the, the word of God and try my best to continue to, to um, you know, to honor Jesus with my life. And, and that that's what I choose, and, and that's how I move, and that's what I do. Um, and um, try not not to. Um, I want to maybe let that. You know, clash with other people. Like I said, you you gotta live your life. I gotta live mine. I think that's important too, because I think like, again, I know this is a development podcast, but this is this is something that's real to me, and it's real to you. Like, I think sometimes like people almost get the impression. I know I did before I became a Christian, like mm -hmm. that it's almost like weird. You know what I'm saying? And like, mm -hmm. you can't like have a relationship with other people that don't. Yeah, no, I like like that. Those misconceptions and mm -hmm. everything like that. So, no, I mean I, I agree 100. percent Like, you, know, you live how you want to live. Yeah. I live how I want to live. And, if I can help you, obviously, then I'm gonna do so. But not not pushing it on people, but at the same time, not like going back on what you believe yeah, listen, for other people. <laughs> I was I would say um, I I had I had tweeted something just a little a little while ago, just about um, maybe maybe just the the, the, the kind of taboo of, of of Jesus and the Bible. No. Um, wherever the thought speaks, but uh, uh, we'll, 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 we'll repeat that taboo part. Hey, shut up. No, you Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just the, the the taboo kind of 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 being a Christian, being able to say, you know, I'm not I'm not going to do that, or I don't want to do that because of because of Jesus, and there's almost like an uncomfortability mm -hmm. um, in that. But it's like, just like I said, you somebody has to you got to live your life, and I got to live mine. I I I, I I I pursue and aim to live mine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, honor God, honor Jesus, who I believe is saving me. Um, and I have to do that, and you know that that, that doesn't infringe on you, and, and you know what you believe, and you may not believe at all. That you know that doesn't infringe on me, um, but I do think there's a, there's an awkwardness that you know, in my opinion, shouldn't be there um, yeah. because people have to live their own lives. Oh, for sure. All right, now I appreciate it. I got one last question, and then we'll, you know we'll wrap it up. Um, coolest moment in the league so far, Ooh. and we'll go hardest first. Hardest moment in the league so far, coolest moment in the league so far, or dopest? Hardest moment in the league so far was um, was getting hurt my, my rookie year. Yeah. And um, most people be like, it should have been losing in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> but the hardest part was, was getting hurt my rookie year. I to get some tweets at you now. Yeah, right? But it, it, was, it, it, it was tough, man. It was tough um, to just you know to kind of find myself in that place and, and, mm -hmm. I, and I thank God for, for my church and my church family who um, helped get me through that process my family um, you know who I, who I had to, to lean back on and believe mm -hmm. um, believe with and you know have people speak life and, and tell me that everything was going to be um, everything was going to be okay and that was, that was a huge difference for me and now and now you know 
contributing and you know kind of coming to my own and people say yo Jonathan's gonna be this and Jonathan's gonna be that mm -hmm. you know I can look back to that time even though it wasn't tough it might it might be my coolest time too but yeah. um that, that 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 was tough for me that 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 patch of um you know own you know personal insecurities and feeling like man like you know I'm not I'm not playing uh, it's been like 50 games it's yeah. like goodness gracious um but you know it all it all worked out for the better and I say the coolest was was being in the playoffs, being in the playoffs and winning. Is it really that much different? That, it's so it's so different, man. It's so it's so crazy. Um, just the, the atmosphere, you know, being able to do that in Orlando when it hasn't been seven years. It's just it's just you can't ask yeah, that's, that. Yeah, that's that. Um, just the support of the fans and um, how loud it was for the city. So yeah, coolest time being in the playoffs, being able to win a game against you know the champions. Mm -hmm. Wish it could have went you know longer and farther, but you know we played hard and. and Give it a good shot. Yeah, most definitely. Well, I appreciate you um, coming on again. This is the first episode since about a year hiatus, so this, <laughs> this is, I, I've been slacking, but this is big, man. Um, uh, PBB fam original. You know, it's PBB crazy. PBB fam original. You know, this yes, is crazy sir. too. He was actually one of the first people. Like, I trained like probably about ten people in my life ever mm -hmm. before you. That's crazy. I was trash when I trained you. And I look back at some stuff like, man, I was garbage. Like, hey, but it's all it's all growth, man. So again, I appreciate it. Come a long way. It's cool to see. Um, I gotta share one small thing. Cause I don't know why I just thought when he was talking, I was like, yo, you really like, you, like you speak like eloquently, dude. Like, like yo, you speak so much better. So I gotta sell out real quick because I just remember I, when uh. Yeah, like a Nike hoop something. What was that thing you used to do when you got nervous? It was like a like a yeah, with my like tick. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I remember that man. Came a long way, I used to so. do that so much, man. I, I used to. Um, that's you're so right. That's you're how so I was right. like when he was talking. I was like, yo, like this is long. I remember you used to do something like yeah, little, that's like, exactly what I did. I remember in TV in interview, I'd be like, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Just nervous. Like, oh, get out! But I, I, I thank God for that. Oh man, yeah, man. So again, yeah, I appreciate you um, coming on, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll link. Not that anyone needs it. I feel like I'm lame saying this because I'm in the league. But I'll link all your social media in case nobody, yes, you know, cool. some people haven't heard of you and everything like that. So again, yeah, appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having me on. No Y'all listening, um, young kids who you know who need a trainer that's going to invest in you. We're gonna speak life into you and in, in your dreams and not just as a basketball player, but as a person. Hit up my man and key. Um, and let's work. I appreciate it, man. All right, this again, Love the Process, episode three officially, episode one from a hiatus. Uh, checking out with Jonathan Isaac, Orlando Magic forward, class of 2016, top 10 pick, FSU alum, all that other crap. So, catch y'all later.